Hello, this is uh, part two of TCPIP in the OSI model. Uh, this section here de uh, deals with the protocols that are used for each uh, layer in the OSI model or TCPIP uh, model and uh, the PDUs that are associated with each layer. I'm Eugene Blanchard. This is from uh, presented to you by telecomworld101.com. Now, it, each layer has a protocol associated or protocols associated with it, and we're going to look at the TCP/IP layers because that's a real protocol. So we'll start with the application layer. In the application layer, which maps the OSI application, presentation, and session layer, we have uh, lots of protocols. The first one we'll look at is HTTP, Hypertext Transport Protocol. Now, if we went to a website and we uh, uh, went to HTTPS secure, one of the things we have to do is log in. As soon as we start logging in, it becomes a session layer, right? Uh, if we, when it's secure, it's encrypted, that's part of the presentation layer. So here's a really good example where we have an, an application layer protocol, HTTPS, that uses the presentation session layer. Other protocols uh, at the application layer is, is Trivial File Transfer Protocol, TFTP, File Transfer Protocol, FTP, Network Time Protocol, Internet Relay Chat, uh, Simple Network Management Protocol, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, POP3, Post Office Protocol, Version 3, um, DNS, Domain Name Services or System. Uh, what, here's a, another example is Telnet um, is an application layer protocol. You don't and but you have to uh, log in so you have a session layer on it but there's no encryption if you do secure shell it's the same as telnet but it has encryption so it uses part of the presentation layer transport layer protocols are their transmission control protocol tcp guarantees end-to-end -end delivery of data so this is the one that you know um, it, it's going to do a three-way handshake, find out if the destination is present. It's going to uh, require acknowledgments to data that's sent out. It's going to, destination is going to check to see if there's any errors during uh, transmission. And if there is, it's going to ask you to resend it. Um, it's going to break the data up into segments and give it sequence numbers. Um, and if data doesn't arrive in sequence, it'll put it in the proper order, things like that. Now. This was all designed back in the 70s. Uh, Department of Defense built a network called ARPANET. Uh, well, the internet actually was through the ARPANET um, department. And it was supposed to survive a, uh, a nuclear holocaust. It was a big deal back then. And the, the thing that really required all this guaranteed end-to-end -end delivery of data is that most of the wide area networks were analogs. So we used modems and they weren't reliable. So we needed a lot of uh, error checking and, you know, um, we call it um, overhead to do this to make sure that data actually got to the destination. There's another protocol on the transport layer. It's called the User Datagram Protocol, UDP, and we call it Ascend and Pray, Hope the Data Arrives. We also call this connectionless because it doesn't care if the destination there. It's just going to kick that data out the door and say, I hope you get to your de destination. And it relies on the upper layer application layer protocols to do the error checking to make sure the data arrives. So this one is just a, a, a really quick and dirty protocol. Send it out. It doesn't have the overhead of a transmission control protocol. And we don't need that now because most of our networks are digital and extremely reliable. Internet layer protocols, which map to the OSI network layer, uh, is IP, Internet Protocol. That's the big one there. Uh, there's also some, another one example is Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP. And what it does is it sends error messages back and forth when things are like destination unreachable or can't find a, uh, a web server or can't find a PC. Uh, you might have used ICMP indirectly and not realize it when you use the ping command. Ping is used to determine if a destination is present. Uh, it actually uses uh, two of the ICMP packets. Uh, one is called echo request. So it sends an echo request to a destination and the destination replies with echo require. Uh, echo reply and that's called what ping does. Uh, another one is address resolution protocol ARP. ARP uh, a lot of times is, is called the layer two and a half protocol because it's halfway between the internet layer protocol and the network access protocol and it maps IP addresses to uh, physical addresses so it's kind of halfway between uh, two layers here. 
network access layer protocols. Uh, this consists of the OSI data link and physical layers. And what we'll find is that there's uh, higher level protocols like uh, bus arbitration methods like carrier sense, multiple access, collision detect, which was used with 10 base T, uh, which is a half duplex, which is an obsolete Ethernet standard. Uh, some people like to talk about carrier sense, multiple access, collision detect as if it's still valid. It's obsolete. It's, it, last I saw it was, any, it was in the 90s. It was the 90s technology. Uh, we have wide area network protocols at this level too. We have T1, ATM, ISDM, ISDN, frame relay, um, things like that. Those are wide area network protocols. We have Wi-Fi, um, all the different flavors. Of it. We have Ethernet, uh, an older protocol token ring. You don't see that anymore. Still mentioned sometimes, but it's obsolete. Died in the 90s. Uh, microwave, uh, lower level ones are microwave and fiber optics. And then we've described things like copper cable and RJ48 and RJ45 and, and uh, BNC connectors and stuff like that. So all that, this is a uh, network access layer protocols and standards. We even have a standard that describes the color code for wires when you create a um, RJ45 connector for Ethernet. And there's two, two standards, EIA 568A and EIA 568B. So we have a lot of standards down here. Now each layer has something called a protocol data unit, a PDU, and it's a generic term used to describe a layer's information. So what happens is that each layer has a, a PDU associated with it and what it is is we have a way we have to have a way of describing specifically that information so when we're talking that we know that we're talking about a specific layer uh, layer 7 PDU is pretty easy it's data right so when we talk about data we know we're talking about layer 7 and that data can be clear text encrypted or compressed Transport layer PDU has uh, the PDU for the transport layer is called a segment for TCP. So when we're talking about the transmission control protocol, we're talking about segments. That's the information that we use with TCP. But for UDP, which is user datagram protocol, it is called a datagram. And we talk about the protocols using these terms. So that we I know if I'm talking about a datagram, I'm talking about UDP. If I'm talking about a segment, I'm talking about TCP. Now both of these program protocols and all protocols have a header or and sometimes they might have a trailer. So what they'll do is the header will have information specific for that protocol, which will describe um, how it has control information and its destination, source address, and other information. And then then it'll be followed by the actual information it's passing and then it might have a trailer some information in the back it could be CRC checking or or things like that right internet layer PDU the internet layer PDU is called a packet and you've probably heard of an IP packet so when we talk about a packet we know we're talking about the internet layer that one's pretty straightforward Network access layer PDU. This layer is a little bit more complicated. Now we have to need the OSI model to explain. So network access layer maps to the data link layer and the physical layer of the OSI model. On the data link layer, it deals with frames. So you might have heard of Ethernet frames. Well, Ethernet is part of the data link layer. Uh, now when we get to the physical layer, we're sending out bits. So what goes out on the wire is bits. So network access layer we have frames and bits. PDU summary application layer is data. Transport layer is segments if it's TCP or datagrams if it's user datagram protocol, UDP. Internet layer is packets for IP. Network access layer is frames for the data link and bits for the physical layer. Now each layer has addressing and it's a scheme to identify services and what we need that is to identify the source address and the destination. Source who's sending the who's sending or requesting the information and destination address of where, it's, where uh, the service is that we want to talk to. So the application transport layer addressing, we'll start with the application. The application has data, there is no addressing with data. And what happens is that when it gets to the transport layer, the transport layer breaks up the data into segments. And the segments are, are 
are small. Uh, what happens is the data is too big to use on a network. So what we do is we break it up into smaller chunks called segments, so that which is more manageable for the network. Okay? Now, in order to identify the services, we use something called ports. Uh, computers understand numbers, typically binary numbers, so what we do is we have numbers that called ports that are used to identify services. Some common services are HTTP is port 80, HTTPS is port 443, Telnet is port 23, FTP is port 20 and 21, and DNS is port 53. So if I wanted to talk to a web server, I would my web browser would go to the web ser uh, server and talk on port 80. If I wanted to talk to a secure website, I wanted to check online banking or, or something like that, I would go to the same web server and talk on port 443. So we can have one physical server that has all of these services running and now we have ports to identify those services running on it. Now clients are dynamically assigned ports from port 8000 to 65535. So my web browser would dynamically assign, just arbitrarily assign a number, say uh, port 10,000, and then I could talk to my web, a web server on port 80. Now I can open up a second web browser and it would be assigned port 10,001. And it could talk to the same web server on port 80. Now the, the web server knows that it has two clients coming from my computer and it can send the correct data to the first one on port 10,000 and the second data to the uh, or web page to the second one on port 10001. So we can keep track of who's talking to who and have multiple web browsers running, things like that. Internet layer addressing, the IP packets use this addressing method, IP addresses. What does an IP address look like? Well, here's an example. 192.168.100.254. You've probably seen IP addresses before, and we call it dot decimal 32-bit address. Each one of these numbers, like 192, represents 8 bits. We've got four numbers, so 4 times 8 gives us our 32-bit address. Network access layer addressing mostly uses Ethernet frames. So Ethernet has been the, the winner in the um, network protocol wars at, at the data link layer. Uh, so we, we find that e even the wide area networks are starting to use Ethernet. Uh, they call it, um, what was the name of that? Carrier Ethernet. And, that. and what happens is it uses a 48-bit hexadecimal number. So a hexadecimal number uh, has the digits from 0 to 9 and then it A, B, C, D, E, and F. If you look at that, there's 16 digits in total. So here's an example of a physical address, 00.12.f4.ab.0c.82. So sometimes you'll see it separated by periods or dots, other times you'll see it separated by dashes, and other times in the Cisco world you'll see it grouped in uh, four digits at a time, so you'll see 0012.f4ab.0c82. Sometimes there won't be any separators at all. Um, so what we'll see is that this is an example of a, a physical address. Each one of these pairs of digits, like 82, represents one byte or eight bits. We've got six numbers like this, so six times 40, uh, eight gives us our 48-bit hexadecimal number. Uh, you'll also hear it referred to the MAC as the MAC address. There's a sublayer in uh, the data link layer called the medium access control, that's where MAC comes from, and it's we refer to as the MAC address or the physical address, and that's an address that's physically uh, permanently burnt into your network interface card on every device. Addressing summary, we have the application layer has data, there's no addressing on it. Transport layer has segments, uh, which the addressing is ports, example is HTTP is port 80, DNS is port 53, Telnet is port 23. Uh, we have the internet layer which is packets, it has IP addresses, An example of an IP address is 192.168.100.254. Uh, network access layer has frames and it has physical addresses, or sometimes called MAC addresses. And here's an example of a 48-bit MAC address, 00.12.f4.ab.0c.82. So, and that uses hexadecimal numbers. 
So what next? This is the best part. We can map network devices to the TCP IP and OSI model. So, so a good way to describe, and devices are made this way, to describe devices, we can map them right to the TCP, TCP IP and OSI model. Hi. Uh, this is the end of part two. Uh, next is TCP IP and the OSI model, part three, which is on network devices and what network devices are associated with each layer of the TCP IP protocol stack. This is Eugene Blanchard for telecomworld101.com. Uh, thanks for watching.